it. Let's do it. Yes. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to week two of the podcast. It is uh, we're just beyond. Uh, we've just got week five done uh, last Sunday, which is yesterday because we, we are recording this on Monday. And with me today, I've got Payan, uh, famous second ranked na player now <laughs> um you are the indisputed rank two i think uh, i hope you get rank one this uh, this season uh, i know a lot of people are hunting for you especially when you're streaming so uh, good luck in the rank season um welcome very much and of course i've got corta with me as well uh, my co-host and tournament organizer uh, so welcome to the both of you uh, we will talk be talking about the standings and the schedule because next week is going to be very exciting with three very big matches coming up and we will be hyping it the whole week. And then we'll talk about uh, Pontecourt and Payan, of course. Uh, and then if we've got some time left, we want to talk about the meta as well. And we'll see whatever brings and comes with it. Um, so Payan, uh, let's have you talk first then. Uh, what's sure, up? How are you um, doing? <laughs> well, first of all, like thanks for having me. Um, sure. This is really cool. but. I mean, after uh, we, oh, I thought the CV rivals wasn't gonna be, uh, wasn't gonna continue a few months back, and then uh, you picked it up, and yeah. you've been putting in a lot of work, which is really good, because yeah, it's nice. been really fun. Mm -hmm. Um, so you want to know like how we're doing now, or like a history of Pongard, or yeah, what, let's what just, do you want to know? Let's just start with now, because you just uh, won against Holy Cru uh, the Holy Crusaders. I'm saying it again, and Chocolate Paladins as well in the season. Yeah. So you've won yeah. the NA rivalry now. Um, mm -hmm. like n no quiet questions asked ask about it anymore like how's the team doing because you've been playing a lot of tournaments yeah yeah um we've been doing good i think what helps a lot was we're able to play on a sunday most of us are able to come online in fact most tournaments before we've had to like barely get 15 people out of a uh, either 18 or 17 or 20 whatever the maximum we can mm -hmm. barely get 15 lots of times but now it's like Oh, we have 19 people show up. Who do we cut? You know, <laughs> so it's a it's a good problem to have. Um, but I mean, we're doing good. We uh we have most of the players that I wanted to play, and um, yeah, I think our team is really solid. We have lots of experience. Mm -hmm. Most of us have lots of experience in tournaments, but definitely all you know in sieges, territory war, everything like that. And uh, yeah, I think we have good synergy and uh, good communication yeah nice um so can you talk to me a little bit about how you like got here because pondegaard has been playing so many tournaments and um yeah you always seem to be getting to the top you're undefeated still in the league as well mm -hmm. um well i think it goes into a lot of planning and a lot of uh player hunting as in uh mm -hmm. like finding who works well with each other and making a, a team that works that revolves around teamwork um obviously individual skill is good but more importantly would be teamwork um i think it's all about working together in this tournament because you know one player can only do so much in a team of 15 but when uh when you work together it's a whole different game and then uh lots of planning we we try to do as many screams as we can but it's a little difficult as well with uh na and eu mm -hmm. teams so that's why we've been screaming uh uh, Chocolate Paladins quite a bit because oh, it nice. works better for NA. <laughs> and then uh, last week, because we faced Chocolate Paladins, we had to scrim. Uh, I had to ask a bunch of other EU teams, like, does this time oh, work for yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you so, didn't try to give anything away for, to them before the yeah, match? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, planning. We were, uh, me and Maximus, Maximus is our shot caller. He's really awesome. Uh, we were planning that Chocolate Paladins would run uh, a lot of Cav because we know lots of their players uh, really like Cav, and then so we've decided to hold the wall. So stuff like that mm -hmm. where we look at VODs and we understand the enemy helps a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other games, let's see. I was actually gone for two weeks because I had spring break. Yeah, that I was on the yeah. Fjord map <laughs> and uh, Allenberg. Um, and I was just, you know, I was just help my team in planning. But as far as playing, I wasn't there. But my team was able to pull it off. They didn't need me. Yeah, apparently, um, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, Surf Slayer was a great match. Yeah, that um, was fun. That was really back and forth both ways. Uh, Could have went either way. Um, yeah, those that was a really good fight. Both when we attacked, we got kind of pincered. We knew it was going to happen, but we thought we could work our way out. And mm. then on our defense. Um, we got picked off by jabs. That was the big issue. They had yes. some jab sergeants, and then uh, we were sitting there for a bit, not knowing whether we should push out or just wait. And then we just kept getting jabbed. So 
you know, you live and you learn. Yeah, exactly. It's interesting, isn't it? Like how the meta involves also because of the bands in this league. I think it makes it very interesting because sometimes you can see random bands almost like Modal Reapers and suddenly you're like, what the hell should I play now? Right? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Uh, lots of the gold units are all, you know, like Medao Reaper and then uh, Falco Flames and Kashigs definitely mm -hmm. uh, are big bands that lots of people don't like to see or they like to get out of the way so they could run whatever they want to run. Yeah, true. Um, we, we've uh, we've I, also seen the, the Outriders ban a lot. I think on Wall 4 people especially don't like it. Because it's very yeah, impressive. definitely. Mm -hmm. um, we we ban Outriders on uh, on our Sun City last map. So th that the idea was we could death ball more with without getting hit by the explosive jabs, mm -hmm. um, because we knew they wanted to run cav, and if we were attacking, we could just death ball with anti cav units instead of uh, getting blown up by jab cav. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, nice. Uh, Cordo, anything from you about the like we're talking about the meta already? I guess why not? Uh, me, I was just a question for PM. Uh, you are a whole player and with all team and you play since the beginning and do you see the, um, the macro gameplay uh, evolve with the time? I know that um, the, the, some, the tournament is different with different setup so the, the gameplay yeah. is different but in globally do you see uh, some modification with the time? Um, yeah and I think that's just part of people understanding maps more as we get to play more tournaments and that's great with custom lobbies that we're able to actually play more tournaments now um when i watched some booming game tournaments back then uh i was like oh i would have never thought about doing that strategy you know stuff like mm -hmm. that because we've only played you know even three or four tournaments uh a few months ago would be quite a few for somebody for most people um so as people play more tournaments and learn from their mistakes and figure out what works um i think lots of strategies change uh like for example i remember in the first core tournament i think it was we on the wall fort map uh everybody just rush b like that was the that was the <laughs> idea and it, it kind of worked yeah. um it, sometimes it worked sometimes it didn't but that, i knew when i watch videos like I know when we face, I think it was Eden on there, like both both of us just rush B on our attack. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, now it's kind of break siege towers, like break the bridge, break siege towers, yeah. um, and then try to hold A. And then, well, so now it's that, but like a few months ago in the last CBL, I know lots of teams uh, just completely gave A and B and then held C. So yeah. stuff like that. I, I like to see how people evolve and whether strategies work or not. And... Sometimes, you know, sometimes the team just couldn't execute a good strategy and they lose doesn't mean it was a bad strategy, mm. stuff like that. That's yeah, really, it's, it's hard to depend on, on the execution as well. And uh, something I noticed is that uh, I think you and Surf Slayers are two of the only teams that are doing it. Is, is you, you always try to uh, pick like five or six muskets at the start uh, just to destroy one tower to buy a little bit of more, just a little bit more time. And I think this is something uh, I, I would, I'd like to hear from you, but I think this is something that actually requires a lot of teamwork and, and like execution as well just to to get it done yeah um because we have a decent amount of pike players me included and then like i do this in siege too where i just swap to musket in the beginning uh when i'm on defense just because you know pike can't do much on the walls to start um but yeah we, we use some some muskets and maybe some javelins too to toss at the siege towers mm -hmm. um i think it's just it's just to be more proactive instead of sitting and waiting for the enemy yeah yeah it definitely puts more pressure. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Corte. Mm -hmm. The reverse. Um, do you see? We, you have a hot player playing in a in competitive match, and do you see an evolution uh, in um, in, you, in your gameplay during the territory war? What was that? A hot player in in tournament. What was the first part? You, you have a, a lot of players uh, in your house to play in, in the tournament. Uh, so do you see um, your, your gameplay change during the Territory War uh, vs. Um, other rules? I wouldn't say like a direct change, like I'm sure it helps with uh, like maintaining, like keeping cool under pressure, stuff like that. But as far as like actual gameplay, I think it's pretty different from Territory War because Territory it's War is often you go in, you fight and you die and you mm -hmm. cycle out. Um, definitely, it, yeah, like I said, it helps with uh, with 
more mentally i'd say because even i've been in you know i've been in quite a few tournaments as you know and mm -hmm. i still get nervous before every tournament even if it's against a team that like um, but that we think we should beat i still like you know get a little, little nervous as we're playing yeah um so stuff like that but every time you know it gets a little better every time you go into another another tournament or another high stakes tw um but yeah i'd say I'd say it's two different games, tournament and TW, but um, you need the same fundamentals, which yeah. could improve with each. Yeah, nice. Nice that you touched it. So to go a level deeper then on, on the fundamentals, what do you think is the are the most important fundamentals for the for the tournament? Um let's see. I guess this also applies to sieges, but like just working with your unit, knowing how to use your hero with your unit because i see lots of people they're really good hero uh they're really good at hero mechanics and they go do their hero thing but you know one hero can only do so much usually so working well with your hero and your unit and then working with your team and their units um i guess also communication is a big fundamental mm. um i remember in our core tournament versus eden we uh so the we were pushing c and then uh, our teammate, one of our teammates, I forgot who, called Hussars on the left. So um, I thought left meant like uh, the west side of the map where nice. there's like a higher platform. <laughs> but he meant uh, in the in the center. That was because we were facing the right kind of, so he said left. So oh, I was like, okay, yeah, I got yeah. it. I had, I had in like left and I'm like, I got yeah. it. Don't worry. <laughs> and then uh, Hussars came through the middle and wiped us oh, all. Like, oh, oh, no. Yeah. You know, so stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you know, always, uh, always good to, to polish up. Yeah, uh, and it's fun. it's no one's fault. It's just miscommunication. Yeah, I think this is the, the, the this is the miscommunication that happens in every single team or every single like match or even siege that you play. Like, uh, no, everyone yeah. has so, some different like interpretation of left, right, east, west. It's so yeah. funny. Yeah, like... and then uh, also just sometimes you don't hear things. Like when I record my matches and I go back mm. to watch it, and I'm like, so I'm listening to it now on the recording. I'm like, wait you said that like I, yeah. I didn't remember at all stuff like that because you're so in the moment and mm. that happens in territory war a lot too when everybody's trying to say something at yeah. once like everybody sees what they see which they think is important which mm -hmm. it could be but like sometimes sometimes it's just a lot of talking yeah, true, true. <laughs> and then uh yeah we always try to um emphasize communication yeah nice i think that this is one of the aspects that i really love about conference play is that uh, it's 15 versus 15 and for a team game that is so many players it's uh, like if you think about it like soccer is one of, one of the most famous sports it's 11 mm -hmm. versus 11. i think rugby is also 15 v 15 but it's those games are so less complicated compared to conquest blade and you need such a deep level of communication to get things done like to execute your plan it's like you require some serious skills like in communications if you want to pull it off yeah i think i think cb's super oh so conquers blade <laughs> yeah, this CB, is confusing, um, isn't it? i know i think i think it's really unique in having 15 because yeah like you said it takes a lot of work and effort to to make a fluid team mm -hmm. um and you know I, I think about like if one day by magical sense and the <laughs> years come like there's like a like a real competitive like land party or something mm -hmm. for a official conquerors blade tournament like yes. I, it'd be cool but at the same time i think like would it be weird having like 15 people on the stands and like, yeah it would be amazing <laughs> or, like 30 people oh, you know and yeah. then yeah but uh i mean that'd be cool to see though yeah just, uh, just idealize it <laughs> yeah exactly just the perspective if you think about it, I, I talked about it with coffee field gaming and interviewed it with me right about like the dream is of mm -hmm. course to play in like a stadium like you see so many esports now and then imagine yeah. 15 v 15 in, in inside the stadium and with or, or like a 3d animation of of the actual battlefield that's going on like oh, yeah i think blowing. that would be super <laughs> cool that would be so cool yeah. uh I think you know. First things first, we gotta have more people play the game. But... Yeah, that's the start. <laughs> Let's hope this contributes yeah. to it. Yeah. About yeah. getting started into the game, um, I just want to give you the opportunity to advertise yourself as well. I know you've been doing oh. uh, like trainings for people and who play Conquerors Blade a lot, and they want to get better. Yeah. Like, just talk to me about it because I, yeah, I love sure. It. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I call it the master class, but it's it's basically one on one coaching, mm -hmm. and it's something I came up with, I think like half a year ago now or something. Um, and there, you know, there's a lot of guides on YouTube and lots of guides are really helpful for beginner players. Um, just getting your, getting started. 
Um, and I've never really made guides myself. Mm -hmm. um, it's just never something I tried. I, I'm, I think I could if I wanted to, but I usually just make montages, just put in <laughs> my clips and put music over it. But then I figured um, there's a lot of people who kind of get like plateaued in their skill when they play, like, you know, when they're level 1000, by the time they're 1500, they might not change too much. And I figured that this masterclass, it's more catered to like the intermediate to advanced level. Mm. But I mean, I could help at any level, but it's, uh, you know, I help more with how to do better in sieges, how to improve your mechanics, how to use your units better with your heroes, stuff like that. Yeah. Just to just to play better, basically. Um, you know, like I said, the guides help a lot in the beginning, just like a bunch of beginner's knowledge, but this is really to bring you to the next level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's really good. I've, I've seen a couple of the reviews. It's it's nice. I think people appreciate it a lot, and I hope you can do it even more. Uh, it will be fun. Yeah, I think. Um, I wish I came up with it sooner. I didn't think about mm -hmm. it, but uh, I, I've had a few, definitely a few customers who really appreciate it, and uh, they they say like, "Oh, like I don't think I ever would have learned that if I didn't take this class." You know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, like, nice, and it? this is this is my first type of like tutoring in any sort of way. Um, except like, you know, to friends when we're studying, but mm -hmm. that doesn't really count. So it's pretty cool to, to see like, uh, to see satisfaction in, in something that I just randomly started up. Yeah, totally, totally. I, I can, uh, agree with that. Like this is absolutely random, the thing that we're doing right now, but, uh, I love it. It's, yeah. it's, it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think you're doing a great job too yeah, and everything thanks. here. Yeah. Thanks man. I appreciate it. All right. Um, should we maybe talk about the standings for a little bit? Um, sure. and we can always come back to, to Pond Guard and everything that's going on. Uh, Corto, anything else you wanted to add before we go to the standings? No, no, it's okay for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. all right, cool. Then let me just uh, get it up on the screen as well, um, because, oh boy, it's been crazy. So, uh, oh, hang on, I need to do this properly. Um, so, have you looked into the standings already? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah? Yeah. So you're undefeated so far. I mean, you got a tie, but that counts as undefeated mm -hmm. in a league. So good for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. And Inject is then also technically undefeated. Yeah, yeah, they, they are actually. Yeah, in a way they are. That's true, uh, which yeah. is kind of funny. They almost can't catch up to you, but they still might. Um, yeah, it, they definitely can. It depends on yeah. Depends on what happens. Exactly. So, all right. So I've got everything up here. Let me just get it there. All right. It should stay on the screen now. Um, so I'll just I'll, I'll just let you know what's going on basically. Okay. Um, let's start with Pool A. So, in Pool A, we have Chocolate Paladins and Blame Elias. We are fighting for fourth place in the last round. Uh, they have to fight each other in the last round. So not this week, but the week after. If Blame Elias wins against um, Surf Slayers, they can be tied at points at the last round, right? So Chocolate Paladins and Blame Elias. If Blame Elias lose against Surf Slayer, the winner between Chocolate Paladins and Blame Elias will be at least fourth with 13 points. So Blame Elias might lose against Surf Slayers because Surf Slayers have been like looking like the stronger, stronger team. I also, in my own experience, having played them. Um, which means that Blame Elias and Chocolate Paladins might be fighting for fourth place to end up with 13 points. Now, Jack versus Pond Guard will most likely decide the first place. Okay, so like you said, you guys are undefeated. If Jack wins against you, then it's all about the last round, whether you win or lose a little bit. But um, mm -hmm. that this is where the big difference comes because the last round, both Jack and Pond Guard are playing like the bottom tier teams, I guess. Um, so that should be easier wins, like, but you might still throw it. You're nervous, right? Uh, everybody <laughs> is. Um, so if Jack win there, will be ahead by one point and both teams have an easy last round. If you guys win, but if Pondgard wins, you are guaranteed first place and Jack could, could actually lose their second place to either Blame Elias or Surf Slayer if Blame Elias or Surf Slayer win the last two rounds. Okay, getting them to a total of 16 points, which means that Jack can only get to 14. Now, if Surf Slayer, uh, they should be guaranteed top four already. So they will definitely be in the winner bracket next season, uh, unless they lose both matches. Because if they lose both matches, they could still uh, be toppled by Chocolate, Blame Elias and Jacked. All right, so lots of potential still for the league. So basically Surf Slayer have to win uh, both and they have to um, 
yeah, just hope for Jack to lose. And then they can still take second place, actually, uh, in order to get the third place final, which is uh, played on 24th of April in a best of five. Um, and then we have got the three teams at the bottom fighting for sixth place, Odin's Legion, Holy Crusaders and Triarchy. Um, and they are all just looking to get a few wins and maybe upset the top four. All right, so I'm gonna take a break and just listen to you guys now. <laughs> what do you think? Um, I think my my prediction is the top four right now uh, will probably most likely be in the top four for the next season, like Pongard, Jack, Blame Elias, and Surf Slayer. Mm. I think just Jack, Blame Elias, and Surf Slayer are other really strong teams. And uh, I thought I thought Surf Slayer would be you know at least second and either first or second above us. Um, but uh, I guess there's some other competition there. Yeah. Uh, Jack, I saw one versus Surf Slayer. Um, I think I have to go back and watch the VOD to to learn a little bit about that fight. But that was a little surprising. Uh, Jack is a great team, but you know, just Surf Slayer coming off CBL championship, mm -hmm. I would have thought they would they would be uh, like undefeated or something. But yeah, absolutely. I think the top four right now is is really solid. Yeah. So so you don't think Chocolate Paladins uh, like they have a chance, of course, but you don't expect Chocolate Paladins to make it to the top four then. Um, who do they play next? Uh, I'll show you. Oh, Triarchy and Blame Elias. Yeah, so... Um, I guess maybe the Blame Elias fight might be... like It could go either way. Um, that'd be a good fight. Yeah. Versus Triarchy... I mean, no offense. Yeah, I, mean, I know, I know. Like we're we're last right place, so now. it's fine. Yeah, we're um, just here for <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I, I would probably say the top four right now is my guess to yeah. stay in the top four. Yeah. Yeah, basically, like, Chocolate Palantins have got it in their own hand. If they win the last round against Blame Elias, they are fourth. They, they mm -hmm. should be. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens there. But um, if I'm correct, uh, it means that Chocolate Palantins and Blame Elias will be tight in points if uh, Chocolate wins against uh, Blame Elias in the last round. Mm -hmm. um, that is assuming that Blame Elias lose against uh, Surf Slayers, though. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see uh -huh. after, after next week. But they have a chance um, if they win against Blame Elias, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I think Chocolate Paladins, they have a they have a team with a lot of talent, uh, mm -hmm. but it's a lot of their first tournaments. So yes. they'll, they'll get better as time goes on for sure. But uh, mm -hmm. lots of them, because I, I know them because we're NA, uh, lots of them are really solid players for sure. Yeah, that's very true. So then what about uh, second and first place? I guess it's the same conversation because um, so the only reason you could be second place is if you lose against Jack. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's very open for second place right now, basically. Yeah, is there, um, was there a difference between first and second in terms of, I mean, it, it would just change the bracket later, but we, we go in the same bracket, right? Uh, no, no, so the, the, the first team from each pool plays the final. It's already like straight to the final. Oh, okay. And the second, oh, I see, I the see. second team from each pool gets to play the third place final. Oh, okay. So, so it really matters. You, you you have to get first if okay. you want to, to okay. win the league. Yeah. So we play against the first place of pool B. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that okay. will most likely will be we are clans, but we'll we'll get to that later. But yes, uh -huh. yes yeah. Okay. So I then, see. so assuming you guys will be first place, right? Because you I mean you're confident. <laughs> you should be. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. I mean, it depends on on Jack, of course. So, um, yeah. If you win against Jack, then everything is open for the second place. So Jack, Blame Lies, and Surf Slayer. Who do you favor there? Ooh. And why? <laughs> I I would normally say Surf Slayer, but they did lose to Jack. But I I'm gonna guess Surf Slayer. I'm right. gonna guess Surf Slayer. This their their team has always been really solid. Yeah, true, true. Corta, what about you? Oh, you still there, Corta? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I heard. Good, good. Um, what do you think about second place? Do you think Blame Lies, Surf Slayer, or uh, um? Ah, or, I think, or the Jack. I think Jack is uh, Jack a good place to be to to will be a second. Mm -hmm. But uh, with the last week uh, we never see. If, uh, the the next week uh, we have a good match and a determinate match. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we we'll have to wait and see, of course. But yeah, so Jack plays Twarki in the last round, so that should be three points for them normally. Um, means that they have 14 
So yeah, they they should be able to make at least third, but four yeah seconds, it's rough. It, it all depends on your game. If if you guys die, I don't even know how it would yeah. end up. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out later if it happens. All right. Yeah, it should be interesting to see for sure. Yeah. All right. So let's go to Pool B then. Um, but it's really it will be easy for the player to do to to have two win, but it's mm -hmm. not the same for Jack. So okay. yeah, true. So yeah, so, the, yeah. The, the schedule is very different. Yeah. So Surf basically has the best schedule, I think. Um, then probably Bondgard. I think you guys have the better schedule. Uh, then yeah, Jack actually has the hardest because they have to play you, but it's about second place, I guess. And then Chocolate mm -hmm. Paladins has the hardest schedule because they play two good teams in the final two weeks. But yeah. All right, we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be interesting, that's for sure. Um, all right, so Pool B. Uh, we are clowns, are still undefeated, and they only need one win out of the last two games to guarantee first place. So that should be very doable for them. Their next game versus Rose is important for Rose um, because Rose can still make it to second place. Um, but we are clowns play Seafoss in the last round, um, which they should normally win. Now, Eden actually picked up a very important win and a great game against Rose last Sunday. So you definitely want to go and rewatch that game on the CB Rifles YouTube channel. Meaning that those two teams, Rose and Eden, now have equal win tie loss ratio. So the last two games are going to matter. If Eden wins against Seavos in round six, they are, guarantees, uh, they are guaranteed at least a tiebreaker for second place against Slavs. Um, and round seven is a buy for them because uh, Pool B has seven teams, so each team gets a buy, and Eden has played uh, the most games up to now. Um, so Eden only gets to play one more game, and then they have all their points. Now Slav, uh, X from EU2, I think that team has been showing up really, really good. They are showing pretty uh, like methodical play. It's very impressive, I think. I don't know if you've watched any of their games. Uh, uh, I have not yet, actually. Yeah? Uh, you should. It's been pretty interesting, <laughs> i got to say. All right. I'll catch up for sure. Yeah, exactly. You will not face them this season, but maybe next season. So then you'll have mm -hmm. to. Um, so Slavs need to win uh, both games to make a tiebreaker happen. And we'll get to... So winning against Banished for them in, uh, in their EU2 rivalry should be very doable. And then their last round against Rose is going to be the fight for second or third place. So the last round is also going to be interesting in Pool B. Uh, for the final standings. So, um, as for Rose, they are going to have the hardest schedule, kind of similar to Chocolate Paladins. Um, they lost against Eden, which means they are out of contention for first place, but they do now face We Are Clowns in the next round. So this is going to be a very nice match. Mm. Um, and then they play Slavs in the last one, like I said. So, Rose basically has the, the tough schedule. Um, and they need at least one point out of those two matches to guarantee top four. If they lose both, which could happen, right? Um, mm. It could tie them with Love and Devotion if Love and Devotion win their uh, both of their games, which is crazy because Love and Devotion <laughs> haven't won that many games yet, but they could still make it. So who knows? Possible. Yeah, it is possible. Yeah, um, because yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, and then they play their round seven against Banished. Um, yeah, and they have a buy in round six. So who knows? Um, Love and Devotion and Seafoss could theoretically make fourth place. So if Rose or Slavs lose both games, but that could not happen because Rose and Slavs play each other. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Seafoss could still go to nine points, um, but they would have to win against Eden and we are clowns. So it's going to be hard, very hard for them. Um, and Banish is just going to try and get a win or a tie somewhere. Um, and I know from uh, Bubbles and also Nine Fingers who's with the team, that they just try to improve for the next season. So we'll see about them. We'll see about them. Um, all right. So again, what are your thoughts about the league? I know you haven't watched too much of it because it's, it's the other group, right? Um, mm -hmm. We are Clowns and Eden. I think you've played those in tournaments before, right? Yeah, definitely. We they're... are Clowns? Yeah, no. I think so. Yeah. Those, they're uh, plebs. They're, yeah. Nice plebs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Both very solid teams. I. I wouldn't expect any other two teams to be at the top of this bracket just because those two teams are by far some of the strongest teams in, you know, all of CB in my game. So mm -hmm. not yeah. surprising there. Um, it was cool. I watched the Weird Clowns versus Eden, and that was actually really fun to watch. Um, 
I thought maybe it would have went one one, but uh, Rare Clowns took the took the two points or the three points, I guess. Yeah. The two wins, and uh, that was pretty cool to see. Yeah, it sure was. Yeah, there's been a few um, uh, interesting games in the Pool B for sure. Um, I think they've got a bit of a different meta as well. Like uh, I haven't done all the analyzing. I have to dive into it further, but yeah, definitely. And Slavs has been playing really well. Like I said. Um, I'm surprised Rose lost against Eden. They seemed like the, the better team up till last week, but then Eden showed them that they are better. Mm -hmm. So that's good. And uh, Corto, I know you watched that game, Eden versus Rose. Uh, what did you think? Oh, well, I think the, the order of the, the pool is uh, is fixed and we know we are clone, it's, uh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Eden logically must be second. And uh, so, and Rose, uh, I think they, they are so fun. For me, um, we don't. Maybe we have a chance in the, the bottom of the of the pool, but uh, for me, the, the top is fixed and not change a lot. Yeah, I think I, I agree with you guys. Um, like if Eden wins, they have that they have to add to add to Rose, so they they should be guaranteed second place almost. Um, and then Rose and Slavs could still like go to fourth, fifth place, but it's very unlikely. Yeah. So let's hope for some good games, and we'll see what's going to happen. Um, next week, actually on Sunday, uh, we have all three games that really matter. So uh, we are Clowns versus uh, Rose, and then the two big matches from Pool A, uh, which is, if I can get it on my screen, I can see it. Yeah, so we have uh, Pond Card versus Checked, and yeah. Blame Lies versus Surf Slayers. And those three games, uh, together with uh, We Are Clowns versus Slavs, uh, Rose, I'm sorry, We Are Clowns versus Rose. Those three games will be at 8, 9, and 10. So you can watch all those three games, one after the other. Uh, they'll all be casted in almost every language, like English, French, German, maybe Turkish. Um, so get excited for next Sunday. We'll be hyping it up as much as we can. So that's going to be really, really good. Um, we are like working on some announcements, official posters, trying to get logos from teams, all stuff like this. So um, yeah, it's going to be really nice, I hope. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for now about the standings and the schedule. Um, so put this away. Um, I will check the time. Pine, you've got some more minutes? Uh, yeah, I'd say half an hour maximum. Oh, perfect. Oh, I don't 20, think we, minutes. I don't think we'll do half an hour unless you really want to, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, Corto, I'll leave it to you because you wanted to talk about the meta, right? A little bit. The, you wanted to talk about the meta a, li a little bit more? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a PM say uh, before. We, in the game, we have two game inside. Mm -hmm. You have the hero and the unit and the unit, and uh, it's not the same. And um, do you think for for you for you PM uh, the meta around the hero weapon is good actually? At, uh, you, you do you think um, it's normal if we see mainly uh, heavy armor? In uh, in competition, and do you want to see more another uh, weapon? Uh, yeah, I think heavy armor is definitely meta, just because there's no there's no downside to heavy armor. Uh, you just the, you know you you don't move slower or anything. You're just you're just tankier. <laughs> uh, I think we would see a lot more heavy armor as well if there was no pike. Uh, yeah, because. Unless you're a solid musket or spear player, which there aren't as many like true musket or spear mains anymore, um, you you would probably play heavy armor in a tournament. I know uh, in season five and six when I main spear, I would still play maul in tournament just because you know it's more of a solid uh, tournament choice, also for territory wars. Um, but I mean that being said, like there's only well I guess I, not there's only but there are like a few decent heavy armor classes and then there's also like longsword which doesn't do much <laughs> but um yeah maul polax short sword right now definitely undisputed insane classes to play yeah. uh i think the polax runes are have completely changed it in a good way i think mm -hmm. uh because yeah. before these new polax runes of the heal on the weapon dance and the cc immunity polax was just kind of an average class you, know, you ran rough justice and lock up a hero that's maybe some some more knockdowns but that's about it um but now it's i think it's really progressed a lot to to be more unique and 
I think I think the CC immunity rune is so strong because yeah. they, they would just dive your artillery. <laughs> uh, in in rank, you climb up the the ladders and you just dive your artillery and you can't stop them. <laughs> yeah, that's it's, it's pretty yeah it's pretty nuts sometimes. So like when you dive and you try to stun them and it just doesn't work, you have to wait for like oh, five seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely like and, the, uh, the 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 lock of a strike from the box, right? That's the ultimate that we're talking about. That's really mm -hmm. good. You, it's a lot of CC and then. Um, you know, you see a mute. The only downfall on the Polex ult, uh, like the rune, is that it's not always on the ultimate. If you do a spell uh, before, like when the cooldown is on and it's not your ultimate, then you won't have it yeah. for the ultimate. Um, but it's so often that you just wait for the right moment with the ultimate anyway. So you almost always yeah. should have it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes you just have to use an ability to to move somewhere or mm. get out of somewhere, and then you you waste your CC immunity. Yeah. But uh, definitely when, when it is available for the right time, it is really strong. Yeah. Talk about C immunity as well. Uh, Corto, I don't know if you've tested it or Pi. And Pi and I, I know you've, I've heard you talk about it a little bit. Uh, the Glaive. The Glaive also has the CC immunity now on the ultimate. The other ultimate, yeah. the one that people but, haven't yeah. in a long time <laughs> or ever. Um, I, I know you haven't really liked it. Um, I haven't really liked it so far, but what do you, what do you think about the changes and why do you, do you not like it so much? Or yeah, so on on paper the glaive buff quote unquote buff uh <laughs> seemed really good like i was really hyped i was like yeah you know um one thing that was really good was uh they removed the stamina cost on the dismount ability mm -hmm. which was great because the glaive dismount isn't even that special it's just a slashing attack as you dismount it's not even a knockdown or anything and it costs i think it was like 25 percent of your stamina bar which is absurd, you know, there's no other class in the game that costs stamina for a dismount. And then some classes like Maul, Pike, Spear, Longsword, Short Sword, they all, and Polax, Nadachi, they all knock down something when they land. Uh, but Glaive is just a dismount, and it's just a little slash, that's it, and it costs, yeah. you know, stamina. <laughs> Um, which is really difficult because you your right click on your glaive on the horse also costs I think like seventy percent of your stamina. Yeah, so about 40, by the time you do an attack, yeah. 40, but yeah, yeah it's yeah it yeah. was it would cost a lot of yeah. yeah and then you can't do anything after you dismount. So uh, yeah. I like that change. They de they definitely uh, finally made a good change on mm -hmm. glaive there. But uh, as far as the buff, it seems more like they just shifted the damage from blunt to slashing. Yeah. And it makes Glaive not as satisfying because when, when you played Blunt Glaive, it was all about the burst. You would do Warlord's Greeting, Flying Reaper, and then Break of Shields, get some nice damage. But now it's like you do more... I guess it just changed the damage instead of Bursty to... It feels like less damage, but maybe it's like around the same, but mm -hmm. over, you know, five, seven seconds of, you know, th that puts you in danger too when you use... Uh, when you have to keep doing damage when you have to keep do, using attacks for the same amount of damage that's yeah. not burst so i played a few games of glaive right after they fixed it and i <laughs> maybe I, I just need to get more used to it but i did not like it yeah i got it it was really it. rough yeah um the hill of blades takes like a quick second to to channel and then mm. you do a few attacks it's not very satisfying no i agree quarter <laughs> if you tried so, it on the glaive the animation of the two first auto attack are not good. Mm. They are too slow. Yeah. They um they did make it a little bit faster, which was nice, but it's still yeah it's still not that impressive. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's it's not perfect. It's it's like I I I could try to compare it to the the Bulwark's ult, but that has so much CC from the start, right? The first hit knocks you down, and then you yeah. keep going on it. And with the glaive, mm -hmm. you have this two first attacks that don't really do anything apart from slashing you, and then it's only the last hit that knocks you, but not even that much. Not like the other ultimate. Yeah, um, so it's just it's, like little staggers and then a little knockdown. But who's gonna stay to get hit for the final? Yeah, you're gonna roll away, use your CCU, like yeah. cancel, whatever. Yeah, so that's yeah, it's not just not good enough. I think um, the ability that I really like about with the glaive uh, is the um, uh, God of Battles. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've used it, but uh, it actually yeah. has a really nice knockback now, which allows you to cancel a lot of abilities, almost any ability, even a mall grab if okay. you time it correctly. Uh huh. Have you tried that? That's one? pretty strong, man. Uh, I haven't yet. I oh, only played a few down. games, and I, I didn't I didn't test that one. All right. Um, so you, you might uh, be onto something now. No, seriously. Um, uh, <laughs> try it out. Uh, if you if a, if a short sword runs into you with the ultimate and you use the god of battle, it will just cancel the ultimate. Okay. Same with the moves, is that same with the, like any ultimate, even the Polex ultimate gets canceled unless just the oh, wow. 
Is that the the damage buff one or the remove? No, the other one. one. Yeah, the other one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I see. Yeah, I, I remember reading that, but I didn't try it. Yeah, you should have tried it. But, um, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. We we considered like playing it a lot in a tournament last Sunday, but we felt like like the, the other abilities just aren't enough. Yeah. But you talk good. about the second ulti of the glaive. Yeah. Yeah. The second. Yeah. yeah. So the not the damage buff, but the. Uh, the buff for yeah, yourself, I, basically. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm expect more um, about the the effect the the add on this ulti to um, to push the unit. Yeah. For me, when when I read it, I think, oh yes, good. It was like the the second ulti of the pike. Mm -hmm. You know, when you remove, mm -hmm. you, yeah, you yeah, break. Like it the... spins around. Yeah. But it's not uh, it's not so effective. Yeah, it, it's true. Like. For me, too, too slow yeah um it must be more mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's kind of funny so yeah. I, I tried uh in, in benetrates you always have those circles of um the shield shield spear, spear sergeants whatever they're called yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so i jump into it i spin with the horse i spin with the glaive and then i jump off mm -hmm. and then i use the heat of uh what is it? god of battles so where you push away all the units and they fly away like two or three meters i think but it's a bit less than the pike yeah okay yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think the rune for the glaive sh on the CC immunity during the Hail of Blades should have been moved to the Flying Reaper, the mm. the main glaive ult, and then yeah, kept keep nice. the blunt damage because mm -hmm. yes. that you know the the glaive ult, the Flying Reaper, like it would get canceled. You'd be like one one yeah. centimeter away from the floor, oh and then God. you get knocked down, and it doesn't <laughs> even go. But like short sword ultimate, you can knock them down when they're still in mm. midair, and they'll still the ult will still go off. Yeah. It's really weird. So stuff like that. It was. I played Glaive a little bit in season six and seven, mm -hmm. and it was just it was fun, but it was really stressful because you get canceled all the time with your flying reef burn. Yeah, totally. But, and now they nerfed the blunt damage. It's it's harder to play Glaive for the blunt, and mm -hmm. then the slashing I didn't find very satisfying. Yeah, you really have to go for the units, but it, it's just not enough damage to kill like a whole unit of heavy armor armor units. So yeah, yeah, maybe in a team mm -hmm. if you have multiple Glaives, you can. Slash the whole unit. I don't know. Well, you might have to test it, but yeah. Yeah, I I used to play Glaive in tournaments just for the damage buff. Mm, yeah. Uh, when you know we would death ball and I'd do damage buff right when we charge stuff like that. But uh, and then I started switching back to Pike and Maul and stuff like that. Yeah, true. The utility. Yeah. You, you don't want to play yeah. musician, Cornemuse? Oh, the Alchemist. The West? Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. Oh. Let, let's talk about the Alchemists and the banners because I think. Talking about the meta, we I think those units have been getting priority, especially in ranked even. Yeah, I haven't played the Alchemist yet, or I haven't played any of the new units actually oh yet. Um, <laughs> I have I want to try the Alchemist because it kind of it works well if you go double gold and then you only have like a little bit of leadership left. Mm -hmm. um, I've definitely seen Alchemist do some good healing, and the smoke screen could be good in some situations. But from what I've heard about the the banner guards, I heard they're pretty bad is what i heard <laughs> um i mean i have to test them out for myself to make sure but um i hear it just takes a long time to work and it doesn't yeah. do much and they don't really fight for themselves for themselves too well but yeah like i said i have to do testing myself mm -hmm. yeah Are you corta have you tested those units uh... mm, i like alchemist but uh, i don't play uh, mu musician mm. the same <laughs> but in general i think it's interesting to have a, a support unit in the game, yeah. Uh, maybe we can expect uh, a unit to to reload uh, the Amu on the Archer or something like that. But yeah. I think it's not really impacted. But uh, we can think about it, mm -hmm. or, or Falconetti or something like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, that's everything. Yeah, that would be interesting. That's also the next thing that came to my mind when I played the Alchemists a lot. Uh, I have played them a lot actually. We we group up with five guys at Sieges, and one of us brings the Alchemists. And then the others just being like Reapers, Mudao, the standard like Imperial mm -hmm. Pike or Greyer or some uh, Imperial Shield Pulse also work really well with that. Um, and it just feels like you can go like three times as long with those units. They will just um, be healed so much if you play them right. You have to be careful with it though. If you stick to the front line too often and too long, then they will run away from, from you and they will get killed. So you have to hold oh, them okay. back sometimes a little bit, use their uh, long sword heal with the Doctrine. Just mm -hmm. like to stay in the back line, and then once the fight at the front is slowing down a little bit, then you can start healing all the units up again. 
Um, I see. But it's, it's, it's really strong. It's really, really strong, especially in uh, maps or field battles where the supply is far away. Because yeah. then the infantry always takes too long to get away and they will get themselves killed somewhere by yeah. you, I've definitely, most likely. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely, uh, I've seen the alchemist healing on my own units and it, mm. it feels, it actually feels really good. Like it's yeah. really strong because the longsword heal, uh, it's, it's kind of whatever on, it, it, it heals the longsword himself really well, but as far mm -hmm. as teammates and other units, it's not too great. Yeah. But uh, I've seen the Alchemist heal definitely like completely bring my unit back to full health, which is really yeah. great. Within five seconds or something, it's pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Corte, you said it's nice to have a support unit, but uh, the bagpipers, they're a support unit as well, just so you know. And we'll not talk about it anymore. All right. You um, checked them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, one of the more, most annoying things I think in a game right now is having bagpipers and alchemists together because of the sounds. I know a lot of people turn <laughs> oh, no. off the sounds because they, they hear them. <laughs> yeah. All right. yeah, I think I, I would really like to see new tier one and tier two units mm. that are actually like decent. Uh, I, I like they uh, they buffed some of the tier twos recently. They made a uh, Dement Spears have a charge. Yeah. They made a uh, um, Jab Militia. I think like. If they hit you with a jab, they do more damage on the charge or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so I like those changes because mm -hmm. those those tier ones and tier twos have a lot of potential to be kind of like a pike militia kind of unit where it's yeah. really good for the tier, but they're not going to beat other like heavy infantry, but they're really mm -hmm. good for tier two. But um, right now, the only tier two, except the new changes before, uh, the only tier two that was worth it was either pike militia or maybe like iron cap swords yeah i really like um, those yeah. and every season we've always had a tier three tier four tier five mm -hmm. uh, it'd be cool to see some tier ones and tier twos in there yeah definitely would definitely would um i definitely want to also pick your mind about the calf because i know you are a big calf player i think one of the best mm -hmm. highlights we have from tournaments um is you <laughs> with the armigers <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. If, if you know which one I'm talking about in the hour tournament, uh, it was yeah, so crazy right, how you right. like you just zigzagged your way around the units to get the charge in from the side and then mm -hmm. came in from the back again. It was nuts. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about the state of the calf? Um, well, definitely it's all about Kashigs right now. Mm -hmm. uh, technically, it was nerfed what like a month <laughs> ago, but it, uh, I I don't think it's. I mean, yes, it was a nerf, but it was not very significant at all. Uh, they still one shot heroes, um, but at the same time, like I think they're you know they're one of the strongest units in the game, no doubt. But at the same time, uh, I think it's somewhat balanced because mm -hmm. like most of the meta infantry can beat Kashigs. You know, Palace Guard can charge into them and brace, but Dao's in Pike's forties, of course, because they're anti cav. Yeah, um, Reapers will lose to Kashigs for sure, mm -hmm. but uh, what else? I mean, there's just a lot of infantry that actually can beat Kashigs, yeah. and uh, but it's it's all about positioning and map awareness to because Kashig players will always try to flank. You mm -hmm. have to be ready for that. Um, and they're they're so just so it, fast. It's it's hard to always keep track of them, right? I think that's that's the yeah, issue that most exactly. people have. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, so I can understand if you know you just get overrun by Kashigs and mm -hmm. you did your best. But at the same time, there's a lot of people who just like complain about Cav and they don't know how to counter it, but they're complaining, mm -hmm. and that's when it, I'm kind of like, you know, you, you could you could try to learn from mistakes, and then you might kill the Kashig next time, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. Um, because I know when I play Kashigs or a anything, if I see a enemy Kashig or or even Jav Cav stuff like that, you could you could attack them first and actually kill them yeah. instead of instead of like. Oh, I'm scared of them. I'm gonna run this way, and then you get hit in the mm. back or something. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Um, true. so uh, definitely, Kashigs are the biggest thing, and then after that, it's just a toss-up for the next best cab. It's mm -hmm. like Armager maybe for best like cost versus value because they're purple, but then you have like Hussars and the Out Rangers got changed. I don't know if it was for the better or worse. Their Devastation is kind of like a cover commander now. Yeah, kind of. I haven't tried it yet, but I've yeah. seen it a little bit. Um, I think the Leo yeah, Rangers might be like the most balanced cap unit right now, so, somehow. Yeah, I, I would think. probably agree. Uh, I, I think the changes after when they were super OP, um, mm -hmm. I think the changes were a good change, but at the same time, like when you have a balanced unit uh, <laughs> in this game, it's harder to play it because there's other units that are stronger than balanced. Yeah. So. 
that's kind of the issue with with yeah. uh tiers like you might have a really strong tier five or you might have a weak tier five and a strong tier four mm -hmm. and then you might as well use the tier four yeah true so, so this is what the league i think that if we go back to the league it what makes it interesting is that Kashyyyk are almost always banned. And suddenly you do see that uh, Cataphracts are being played, Hussars are being played, Liao's are being yeah. played. Like, a lot of cap becomes viable again. Yeah, definitely. Um, I like that because, yeah, like I said, Kashyyyk's you know, strongest cap mm -hmm. by far. And then after that is a toss-up. So I, I did see Surf Slayers run some Cataphracts, and that was lots. really cool yeah, to see. I, I, I yeah. can tell you, lots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think... I, I made a cataphract montage back in season five. Uh, it was it was it was <laughs> great and fun, but at the same time, like that's when uh, the old Kashigs before their initial nerf. Oh yeah, when they were even better. So like yeah. you know, I missed out on a lot of fun with the old <laughs> Kashigs, but um, still it was it was fun to make a cataphract montage when they were like pretty bad. <laughs> I remember running um, if you know Cobra Commander, he's yeah. a he's a old NA streamer. Um, he had his jab sergeants, and I looped around twice. And I ran through, I charged, United charged his jab sergeants twice, and they still got oh, up and they didn't God. die. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> what's that? So, yeah. Um, but definitely the cataphract change was really good. Uh, yeah. They buffed their United, or their charge in general when they charge, or, when they charge on longer distance. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, nice. Good, good to see. Talk. Yeah, really good, really good. Um, something impressive that I've seen from you is uh, how you use the bike to stop any cap charge, basically. Uh, mm, yeah. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows it, but if you don't, <laughs> just go to Pyant's uh, YouTube channel, watch his uh, <laughs> highlights. It's pretty, pretty, pretty impressive. Um, yeah, definitely a big, uh, big part of the game right now is killing Kashyyyk. Yeah. Uh, so, the more Kashyyyk you kill, the better yeah, chance of winning. <laughs> exactly. So how did you or someone else come up with that? Uh... Um, I think. I think multiple people came up with it at the same time, but it just kind of happened. You mm. know, I play Pike almost all the time. I switch between Pike and Musket right now, but mostly Pike. And uh, you just, I don't know, I just found out, oh, hey, this ability stops all the cab charge. And then I'll have my Kashyyyk's right behind me. So once I CC the enemy Kashyyyk's, I'll, you know, I'll go in and kill them myself. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just about being proactive. And, you know, half the time that, you, or, all the times you see it in the montage when I kill the Kashyyyk, you know, the other half of the time I might die. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, it's, it's pretty it's hard to pull and... off, isn't it? It's not like yeah. an, an automatic kill secure. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, lots of people will say like, oh, when they watch, you know, it's a highlight video. Lots mm. of people say, oh, how do you always do that? It's like, I'm not perfect. Like, yeah. I, I die just as many times as I try, you know. Um, but it's, it's about figuring what works and mm. trying to do your best whenever you can instead of... Uh, Instead of sitting back and letting the Kashyyyks come to you, I guess. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Unless but... you have the Dows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's the only time. Yeah. <laughs> but then there's always Outriders, so yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. That well, okay. That brings me to another thing about the game. Overall, I think as far as the units, I think it's pretty well balanced because every unit has some kind of counter mm. to another. Um, maybe Javcav's a, Javcav is a slight exception, but like. You know, a hero could dive on the jab cav, just like uh, it's kind of like rock paper scissors, uh, with more components, I guess. <laughs> yeah, which it, so everything has a counter, which which I like. Some things are stronger than others, but overall, you you can be a, any unit with mm -hmm. a single other type of unit. So yeah. yeah, true. I agree. And and even then, it's it's a team game in the end. So it 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 isn't yeah. even really about yeah. the one v ones. It's it's more often about the two v twos and three v threes and the four v fours and. 10 feet yeah, dense even definitely. In so yeah totally yeah <laughs> always think about your teammates that's what this game is about you know yeah all yeah. right corto anything else you want to go to with this conversation no, 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 it was good. Just uh, it's what I think. It's um, about the cavalry. I, I like the the balance what they do mm. uh, since a long time. But it's bad. We the player or the the game. I don't know. We see always one cavalry. You you talk about the cataf cataphractor, but we don't see a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 every time we have one T5 cavalry uh, are, uh, are the, the most one. But with the time, uh, I hope we can see different cavalry with different gameplay and uh, to use in different situations and different map. So that's all. Yeah.
Yeah, let's hope yeah, so. Yeah, I think well. one big thing is uh, once Medals came out, uh, and they're they're pretty strong infantry in general, but since they're so strong anti cav it's it's harder to or it's been harder to play Medals uh, or harder to play cavalry. So mm -hmm. uh, it's still possible, and I think um, the newer players are playing more infantry because of that. But uh, definitely, I think lots of more veteran players are still trying to make the cab work, and it can. It's just uh, sometimes harder to pull off now. Yeah, yeah. You just have yeah. to wait a little longer and make sure someone yeah. drops their guard, and then you can jump right in. Yeah. Um, another question: um, What would you really like to see on the pod in the podcast? Is there anything like any specific guest or someone that you would like mm. to, to listen to? Um. Wait, yeah. <laughs> let me think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I want to see the podcast. Oh, maybe we could uh we could show some replays on like a certain highlight, like a you know like a thirty second clip mm -hmm. uh of whatever part of a battle that was really cool uh in the tournament, and then you know uh you could maybe like I could walk through our our mindset when we we're doing this play or what mm -hmm. we were thinking at mm -hmm. this time, something like that. So just a little replay, a little commentary. Yeah, that'd be really nice. That'd be cool. yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Let's let's see if we, if, if you find a clip, just send like send it to me, and we'll we'll set something up to to get it done. That would be really okay. really amazing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Also, uh, <laughs> shout out to any team captains uh, if they have a clip. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Yeah. Good idea. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. All right. Um, I'm looking at the clock just for you, Brian. Um, how long have you got? Because we've been going for um, a long time and I feel like we can go on forever, which I would love to, but... I can go another 10 minutes. 10 minutes maximum. <laughs> and then you can miss the first five minutes of your next collection. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> no, let's just uh, come to a conclusion. Then. Um, so the last thing I would like to talk about with you, uh, both of you, is um, where we are headed for the competitive scene, because with me, I've got one of the best tournament organizers in Corto and one of the best team captains and players in Pion. So where do you see this going with the league and Conqueror's Blade? Uh, I think oh, for us, we're just kind of playing to have fun and then trying to do our best while we're at it. But mm -hmm. as far as TV Rivals, I think it could it has huge potential. And now you're uh, technically sponsored by my games, at least <laughs> for the rewards. Yeah. Uh, I think that's great because, you know, you you pick this whole thing up yourself, you put in all this work and getting uh, getting some reward back is great and some some gratification. But uh, yeah, I think you have great potential to expand this even further. Maybe I'm sure there's going to be other teams next season that like after hearing about this, they're like, oh, that's actually pretty mm -hmm. cool, you know? And it's, uh, I feel like it's, it's also neat because it's not as high stakes as in, uh, you know, you have one single tournament bracket, you win or you lose or you're out. Here you get to play a bunch of teams and you get to get better every time. Yeah. Um, so I, I really like that about this type of tournament. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Jim Friday and Carter. <laughs> no, just say it's uh, good, thank you. <laughs> oh yeah, good, good, good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, yeah. I I really appreciate what you're saying. So I really love this format as well that uh, I actually Corto and I came up with this. Like I had this idea and I pitched it with Corto and he gave me some input and then, then we came to this conclusion basically. Um, and I really like it because uh, in all tournaments that we've seen, we've always seen the good teams get even better and the teams that lose in the first round, you never see them again. Um, but now they finally have a chance to keep playing. Like teams like Trike and Banish, I think they've been improving over the weeks, but they've lost every game, but they've, they're still playing for five weeks now and they will be finished at least and they will most likely pay, play the next one as well, just because it's so much fun. So. Yeah, that's and I nice. mean that's the biggest thing. As long as you're having fun and you're learning, you know that's mm -hmm. that's all you can do. Um, even as pawn guard, when we have, I'd say a decent history. Like we've definitely had our big losses before, and we always learn from those. And uh, I'd say that's in the long run, it might be more beneficial to lose sometimes because <laughs> uh, you know it, the the loss hits you harder, and then you want to improve from that. If you win, you're just like you're happy and it's great, but yeah. uh, it's harder to learn from a win. Yeah, exactly. But the loss should be at the right time and at the right against a good opponent, at least. <laughs> yeah, true. Very don't, true. Don't yeah. lose the final. That will be fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, actually, okay. Just because you, right, you you did this to me, so uh, I've been playing with you guys um, in the CBL. I think it was right. 
Um, yeah, CPL and also was it one of the Ari tournaments? I think. Uh, oh I yeah, think actually, yeah, yeah. That was the first, yeah. the, fr the second game that I cast. That suddenly you didn't have enough players or something. Had to step in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was really fun. Um, that was yeah. my first tournament experience as well. But the last one in CBL, oh, okay. I think we actually, we were fighting for third place and I think that was one of the most fun losses that you probably ever yeah. had, right? I was not salty at all. That was one of the most fun games I've had. We were just kind of, get on point, stay yeah. on point, don't <laughs> die. And then we lost by, I think like two seconds yeah. or something. And, did, but did, that was really fun. Yeah, there was sort of like one or two village watchmen that stayed on the point until yeah. just a couple of seconds. And oh my God. There, there, yeah, there were one or two village watchmen and we thought maybe they could hang on. But yeah. the instant, I remember like multiple of us saw um, what the short sword go for a belly flop. Mm -hmm. And we're like, no, no. it's not yeah. pushing. <laughs> we, you should, we should actually make a clip out of it and just yeah, slow mo it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, those kinds of games, you know, it's like anything could go either way, um, yeah. and there's there's no one to blame because any, everyone could have done something a little better, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, it was fun, and we're not we're not mad about it. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. It was nice. I, I don't know if 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 the voice comes are, comes are anywhere to be found on YouTube. If, um, if they are, I have it recorded. It. I have it recorded. Yeah, we or should... I think I do. Uh, yeah, if, if, I know I've seen it somewhere, but it might just be inside like the team channel. We should get it out mm. somewhere because it's so much fun. Uh, and if you want to yeah. re rewatch the games for anyone that's listening, um, on CB CB highlights, that's the only channel I used to use a lot for all the tournaments to create highlights from the matches. Uh, you can find the game there. It was Bond Guard versus Wings Club. That's it. Yeah, Bond Guard versus, mm. versus Wings Club. Yeah. The last, no, the second game. In the third place yeah, match. second yeah, game. Yeah, go watch yeah. it. Uh, especially last, I think it lasted for five minutes. The last fight was insane. Yeah, it was really yeah. nice. All right. CB highlights. Yeah, CB <laughs> highlights. CB CB highlights. All right, it's so confusing. <laughs> I know. All right, um, Corto, anything from you to finish this podcast? No, but thank you to PM uh, to come to talk with us, and uh, it was nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you for allowing us to pick on pick on your mind and. Get so many great insights. Um, it's been a lot of fun. All right. Yeah. No um, yeah, we'll be back on Sunday with the matches. Um, follow the Discord. Um, I'll post a link somewhere down below or upside down. I don't know. Um, I hope you can find us on YouTube and any podcast that you are listening to. Um, it's on Spotify. It's also on Google, and I'm trying to get it in all the other ones. Uh, so we'll see about it. And then we will see you on Sunday. Watch all the matches and then come back for the podcast again next week when we, we will have some other guest, I don't know, might be French, um, but good luck, have fun, enjoy your games.